Well, hello. Oh. Hi. Earbuds in here. My wife is always having simultaneously Zoom meetings in other parts of the house, so I don't try not to uh, disturb her. <laughs> well, anyway, um, yeah, it's been a uh, uh, pretty eventful morning uh, as far as uh, as Patrick was, was concerned and everything, but uh, anyway, I might just get involved in this uh right away and we can brief people later, but, um, you know, just uh, to um, start out with, uh, there's a, um, you, you know, to, fit, to uh, has, has anybody had any interesting uh, active imaginations or anything that they wanna talk about? Oh, wait, there's two. Yeah. Uh, you know, just if, if you did have any uh, interesting, uh, uh, it, 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 I, I tell you, I sure did. Hi, Stuart. Um, I had a, uh, uh, you know, one that was uh, very, uh, oh, wait, here's Charles. I just kind of, I told my wife about it too. You know, I had been having these images of, uh, of uh, and, and, you know, I've been really, trying very much to relate to these entities, you know, uh, in, and through um, interaction, you know, to try to develop a relatedness with them. And, uh, uh, you know, one image I had been seeing a lot lately was, um, uh, you know, this mountain road and on the mountain road were all of these uh, uh, big trucks that were um, blocking it, you know? And uh, so, you know, I said, um, hi. Uh, wait, I'm gonna get rid I don't wanna hold my video in here. <laughs> Let's see. I was wondering who that ugly guy was and it's me. Yeah, there we go. No, correct. <laughs> well, from profile. So who is that? Well, anyway, uh, so, um, Anyway, I ask, what, what is this road? Where's this road? And she says, well, that's the path of, uh, of, of your life, you know? And uh, it, it was actually this road, I don't know if you've ever been to Yosemite, but it, it's the road that goes past El Capitan and Half Dome. You know, it's, a, it's got some very small trees and then it's, it's a road with no ditches. It's just kind of almost like a, a driveway, you know? And uh, uh, so then suddenly I see all these animals move on to the road. And then I see a, a platter of food with big, um, with food being put on it. And uh, uh, then I see uh, the anima dressed in black and white. So uh, accompanying me down this road are the, are the instincts the food that needs to be cooked, the one that is the energy of, of life, uh, the lib libido, and then the, um, and then the anima it's con accompanying me down this road. And then suddenly I see a bunch of angry men on bikes coming this way, you know, the opposite way. And they're, they're um, saying, get out of the way, get out of the way. And, you know, it was, it's the shadow aspect is taking me back to the beginning. You know, then I see uh, a, a, a man and a woman. The woman has a dental problem and somebody yells out, um, go see Dr. Adam, you know, so go, go see the first man. He will cure your inability to seize hold of the images, digest them, assimilate them and integrate them, you know. And then I, I, we see a truck there, one of these obstacles, and we go knock on the door and uh, the trucker comes out and we said, who owns all these trucks? And he says, the state owns them. I work for the state. 
So, I mean, the ego owns them. I work for the ego. I work for the conscious attitude, you know? And uh, uh, then, then the, the, one of the final images was, there was a spoon key that turned the lock. Now this was a uh, sensation unlocks the door. Anyway, that was, uh, uh, I just was gonna start out with that a little bit, you know, um, and does uh, uh, anybody else have any interesting uh, active imaginations they wanna report on or? I just wanna do, uh, uh, say uh, to start out with too is uh, there is, um, just to, to finish up the last, um, let's see, share content. Okay, well, I don't know. It says only the host can share in this meeting. But anyway, uh, we'll, we won't uh, go through that, but it was the, uh, I was gonna show you a, 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 a chart of the eternal feminine, you know, and it was just to finish up the, the four animas from last time. There is, there are two axes towards the archetypal feminine. feminine. One is the mother. And that is uh, an axis, actually uh, Neumann turns it this way. And it, at one axis is, is the, um, is the uh, negative mother would be Kali or, uh, and she's the devourer, she's the old witch. And at the other end is Sophia and she is, is the good mother, the mother of wisdom. And uh, we saw a figure, I, who was it that had the figure of her, uh, that was, uh, was that you, Kevin? That was yeah, in yeah. the lady of white without a head, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, she's, yeah. she's somewhat uh, reminiscent of Sophia because uh, she's, she's dressed in white as the virgin would be, and she doesn't have a head. And then uh, in the middle is the great mother, who's the um, is is at the center. Go ahead, Stuart. The image of the Black Madonna. Where would you place that? Okay, the Black in Madonna. That, okay. Yeah, the the Black Madonna would be um, a, something to do with the anima. You know, I would think maybe. Now I'm not sure. Let me let me look real quick and see if I. Have for, it. Yeah. For. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, in, this is in relation to uh, a woman's dreams. Yes. It's come up twice in the last yes. uh, few weeks. Well, well, I don't know if you can see that, but because uh, I can't share it, but uh, that Mary is on the uh, positive anima side. So, so this, um, this axis is the mother, the, the arc, what they call the archetypal feminine. And then this axis is the transformational anima. So she's the anima of transformation. And uh, uh, Mary is on the positive uh, side of the anima of transformation, the Madonna. And um, the, uh, on, the, on the negative side is, um, is, the, uh, uh, is um, the, the, the young witch who, who takes you into addiction, you know, a, a spiritual experience that does not evolve transformation, which would be, um, you know, addiction to drugs or to alcohol. You're seeking it spiritual. Go ahead, Jordy. Go ahead, Jordy. Uh, can you unmute yourself or not? I just, can help. Just, just a footnote. Uh, religious feminine images, particularly Roman Catholic, uh, black Madonnas, white Madonnas, which in Spain we have uh, the, we are well supplied with, so to speak. They have an element of genius lofty, lofty. genius lofty. Yes, uh, Loki, are you talking about the Norwegian god or Loki? No, no, Loki, uh, genius, it's Latin, genius Loki, I mean. Uh, oh yeah, spirit, uh, genius. Are you talking about the, the genius uh, of, the, of the local place, the God of the local place? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the, the virgin images to my understanding, and I, I, I don't want to take time here. 
have uh, are polysemic, have uh, layers and layers of layers of meaning, which mm -hmm. makes sense for the local people. Yes. Yeah, it's um, the god god of the local place. Yeah. Not of the local place, the virgin or the, the, the there is an element of anima, there is an element of fertility, there is an element of luck, there is an, an element of accepting destiny, all mixed together. I mean. And, there is, and there is a narrative associated. I mean, it's not only the image. There is an or, an or, local oral tradition as far as Spain goes. Now, is this, are you, is this in regards to the Black Madonna or? In regards to all Madonnas. All, all Madonnas. Okay. Not all Black Madonnas are the same Black Madonna. I mean, Montserrat yeah. is a specific one. The, the Montserrat, which has almost Wagnerian connotations because of the landscape. Nuria, which is in the Pyrenees, is different. It's a symbol of fertility. I mean, they overlap. Uh, they share plenty of meanings. Mm -hmm. Typically, the Madonna wears blue, you know. Well, go ahead, Adam. No, I was just going to say in regards to what Stuart was asking, <clears throat> complete ignorance here now, but maybe if, if this person has had this dream of the Black Madonna twice and building on what Jordi said about the genius loci, maybe it would be important to understand what, what I'm sure you've done this, Stuart, but what, what is this bringing up? for the person, what, you know, how would she or he describe the meaning of that symbol? You know, I mean, that's just my. It, it's yeah, not such a purified Madonna, such a white yeah. Madonna. Yeah. I was I was curious in relation to what Craig was speaking about as as part of one of the sort of main axes mm -hmm. of the feminine. Uh, because obviously the difference between the white Madonna and the Black Madonna. Yes. So I yeah. was curious about that. Um, so that's at, okay. No, I mean, I got plenty of information yeah. there. Yeah. So thank you. Well, anyway, uh, I thought um, what what we might want to do um, is is uh, describe I, I is um, uh, talk about uh, James Hellman's yeah. absolutely wonderful work, and I, I don't think I can do it justice today because it's so rich. You know, maybe we, we can just go over a little bit of it today because there's plenty to discuss. And then maybe we can do a summary next time. But, um, James Hillman was a, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, went to the Young Institute. He uh, graduated in 1959. He uh, um, was the director of studies there until 1969 uh, because of, uh, he had to leave because uh, all hell broke loose after Young uh, died. You know, there was, um, he died in 61, but there was so much infighting, you know, between, in the Young Institute, between um, uh, people who wanted to move it more to personalistic psychology. I mean, there were just all sorts of, uh, of, of offshoots of Young after he left. And, but I think one that is often uh, mentioned as not being Jungian is, uh, is Hillman, but I don't think Jung would have any problem with, with what Hillman is saying. Basically what Hillman is saying is that, um, that uh, Christianity uh, made these polar opposites of God, the spirit and the material world. And there's nothing in between, you know, where um, uh, Young, I think, would agree with Hillman. Yes, there is something in between. It is the world of soul. And it is the it is is a polytheistic world. I mean, because every single energy within us has a voice, you know, like I was telling my wife the other day, I had a really flat act of imagination. So I went. And I asked the God of flatness to uh, tell me why, who he was and what, what he's all about, you know. But I mean, you can, you can do this. Uh, the heart has a different consciousness. The hands have a different consciousness. They're all alive, you know. And, uh, and so when, when he's saying that in uh, what he's basically getting around to is that the active imagination 
is is talking to the voices of these different energies and personifying them, you know, and he's going to talk about um, uh, how Jung uh, did that, you know, uh, starting out with Elijah and Salome. And he, he says something really interesting there that, um, uh, that uh, Elijah was Freud and, and Salome was a woman named Lou Salome, who is a uh, very famous, she was- uh, uh, Yeah, Lou yes, exactly. Yes. A, remarkable, a remarkable person. Yes, Same she, as an, an and... yes. she was um, actually uh, spent, she was Nietzsche's consort. Yep. She was uh, R Rainier Rilke's consort. Yep. She was Freud's consort. And she also spent time with Jung. And I don't, I don't know if you can see this, but there she is uh, on the, uh, uh, if you can see Emma Young is right here. Yeah. And then uh, Lou Salome is right here. And then uh, Tony, Tony Wolf Tony is Wolf, yeah. right here, you know. And, uh, uh, but she, <coughs> she was very involved. Now here she is with Rilke, you know. And then, um, of course, the, I, they, somebody's got a picture of her and Freud, but she was not actually, I, I think that's a Photoshop. But here she is with Nietzsche. Now Nietzsche is is uh, uh, of course has the mustache, and then she's in the wagon. There's some kind of opposing thing. But anyway, uh, that was a very interesting thing, and um, that because that occurred right after um, Young broke with Freud. But later uh, Elijah, who was a very um, you know figure of the Old Testament, you know who so somewhat represented Freud, who was um, you know. Um, represented Judaism, you know, to, to some extent, morphs into Philemon, who is a pagan, you know, but uh, so Elijah and Philemon are pretty much the same figures. But anyway, um, uh, that's what we're going to go through is this, this world of the daemon and, and how uh, uh, active imagination is, um, is to uh, return, they say, to the middle world. In the middle world is the world of soul, at least while we're alive. The, the, and that is the world of the feminine, where uh, the spirit is a more of ma masculine uh, uh, fig. Uh, it's, it's actually probably not, it has no gender, you know, but it, it tends, it, the fact that it's such, such so uni unity, uh, so much oneness, uh, you know, Jung says one is not a number. Two is the first number, because that's when reality starts. Uh, with one, there is no, uh, no uh, the only time you can get reality is through uh, multiplicity. Uh, nothing happens in, in a, a unitary uh, universe, but um, actually, uh, you know, two, and I just wanted to, uh, this is just a little bit of an introduction. Uh, Young uh, and Hillman, you know, spent a lot of time together. You know, Hillman said, I spent a lot of time knee to knee with, with, with uh, Young. And uh, I just wanted you to listen a little bit to Young and Hillman talking to each other. This is, this is a live recording here. Let's see if you can hear that. All right. Oh, wait, I got to turn this off there. I got first, I wait, wait a second. I'm going to, um, I have to get out of my, uh, Zoom session here. This is so but I mean, it's 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 pretty fast. What might work is using a share screen. I, I yeah think yeah I, on that too. The the first thing I wanted to do is just to eliminate my uh, Zoom session here though, because it's um, causing feedback here. Well, see the 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 problem is right now um, for some reason. My uh, my our session is set up that only I can share, and I did not do that. But uh, anyway, here here's. Well, the this question has to do with the importance of the body as the basis 
of the, the entire process. The Christian divider, understand properly, seems to be whether the body is the apt vessel or is a good vessel for the mental development or the mental process. The question that Mr. Hillman puts in the end, what can we do towards strengthening and refining the vessel? How can we bring ourselves and our patients closer to uh, an incarnation of the process and the resurrection of the flesh? I would say, according to my bias and to the resurrection of the spirit. <laughs> now, I should be grateful to Mr. Gilman, if he kindly would explain a little bit of comment on his question so that I see more clearly what it is about. Now, here's Hillman. After a certain stage in the process is uh, arrived at where the uh, dynamic content for the spirit is uh, shows itself, a lot depends on the body as the vessel for holding this and offering the. Oh, yes, there you say, excuse me, when I interrupt you. As the analysis proceeds, so that a certain access to the spirit has been made possible and dynamic contents have begun to move, the whole trick of the work seems to depend upon the vessel. Well, I, I just wanted you to hear a little bit of that. I'll, I'll, I'll send the link later, but uh, it's just pretty fascinating to hear Young and Hillman speaking with each other, you know, because Hillman is this wonderful, uh, I mean, if you've never read Hillman, it's such a pleasure, you know, but, um, Oh, wait well, what what did he say at the end there that the process depends on the what of the vessel um the... i i uh, uh, um i didn't really catch it but yeah, uh, what, what hillman was asking whether whether the body and the mind are an apt vessel uh for the transformation and then uh young said that it is if there is a resurrection of the spirit is what he said within the body you know, and uh, so anyway, hi, hi, Tim and Lewis, you know, um, it, it was just, it's just kind of fun to listen to those two. It's just fascinating. To, first of all, Young is, is a little bit hard to understand with his Swiss accent, but um, I just thought you might want to get a little bit of that. But uh, anyway, um, so, so we're going to, uh, I just wanted to uh, sort of uh, go through what he says about active imagination, you know. Uh, this is what Hillman says about active imagination, you know, that it's not a spiritual discipline. And the reason it is, is because there's no prescribed or proscribed fantasies. You know, uh, one works with the images that arise, not, not ones that are chosen by a master or code. Whatever arises is what we, um, what we have these dialogues with. And it's not an artistic endeavor it's not a creative production or of paintings or poems and uh, uh by the way i just wanted to show you one one other thing from that picture of uh lou salome the 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 one uh who is uh right here this one here she is the one that told young in her dream at least it was her voice that went that when he said, what is this I'm doing? It's not psychology, it's, it's, it's not science, what is it? And she says, it's art. And uh, Jung took great exception to this. And uh, uh, he, he actually describes this woman too, I think, as uh, he says that she was a very brilliant psychopath. And he, he had to fi finally break away from her, you know, but, um, Anyway, um, this is Hillman. Active imagination is not an artistic endeavor. It's not a creative production of paintings and poems. Uh, you know, it, it, um, the aesthetic of active imagination is not to be confused with art for exhibition or publication. Uh, it's, it's one should try as, uh, as best one can aesthetically uh, 
uh, only for the sake of the figures and in dedication to them to realize their beauty and not for the sake of art. So any anytime we're doing artwork and everything, we are uh, doing it in um, for the sake of the figures and in dedication to the figures. And actually, Jung said this also makes them more real and concrete and makes the act of imaginations more real and concrete in the outer world. Go ahead, Stuart. Craig, yeah, you just reminded me of something there from many, many years ago. Yes. The, the whole sort of experience of Patrick, the dialogue, transmediumship began for me, just for the sake of the others here, began for me about, you know, 25 years ago, say. Um, and then I was sitting regularly for that. And it was happening regularly, all of the time. And it was deep. And I would have said that, yeah, I have a good relationship with that. And yeah, it's meaningful. And all of those things, and I was taking dialogues, recording it. There was a lot of effort going into it, a lot of time going into it. And I remember one day being outside and, and uh, a friend of mine was over and he asked me a question about uh, Patrick. And I remember in the course of answering him the question, whatever it was, I remember turning around and talking to Patrick yeah. as if he was standing right beside me. Mm -hmm. And then I turned back and I spoke to Tim directly. And it suddenly dawned on me what I had just done. Mm -hmm. That I had made him real. He was as real as you or me or mm -hmm. the chap I was talking to. And it hit me like a ton of bricks in that moment, how it had slowly sort of eaten away into me mm -hmm. as a reality, that this is not me. And with you all the time and it's really differential become more real and manifest and yeah. you, you know one thing i i you know it, when you do a dream you know or an act of imagination the, the first day it seems very strange but the second day after you've slept on it it seems absolutely real and i think it's the same thing with an act of imagination they take on a reality uh that Jung said, at least in his, his life, was more real than any historical event that happened to him. He said, I remembered all these historical events only vaguely, and they, every year they get more vaporous. He says, but, but the, uh, the, the ones that he really spent time on, you know, in, uh, in dedication to them and to realize their beauty and not just for the sake of art and tried to integrate and make embody in himself their reality kept growing and growing you know and uh, that's just i feel that not probably like young does but you know sometimes when i'm, I'm having a dream uh at first it just seems wow this is so um uh, so vaporous and and you know it's just this I, I, there's something about it that's so unreal. Well, after you spend some time on it, the next day, it is as knock on wood real, you know? I mean, it really, it, it takes on that quantity, quality. And then, go ahead, Adam. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, I was just gonna add um, <clears throat> uh, an experience that I have, maybe it's not what everybody experiences, but like I realized I was doing active imagination without calling it that. And in my case, sometimes I'll have like a kind of an understanding, which seems to be like maybe like an archetypal understanding wanting to manifest itself through me or something. And so I'll, I'll write a poem or I'll <clears throat> do a painting or something like that and um, <clears throat> or do a song. And uh, in the process of doing it, it's like it's not art for the sake of exhibition or performance. It's, it's really, it's like a transformation takes place while I'm doing it. It's like, that is actually an active process of, of transformation itself. And then afterwards, you know, you have a song, you have a, <clears throat> a poem or a painting or something. And in my case, I can go back and look at it and actually get more information out of it. Just, just something to share. Yeah. Well, the, um, I think you know if if you if we really if if we take this what Hillman says he so um, beautifully 
describes what is actually happening with active imagination and why it's so important. And um, uh, you, you know, one of uh, the uh, things uh, he says in there, well, just, uh, you know, the fact that it, it, uh, it, it, it if, if you really are doing it properly, it's an ethical obligation. You know, once you have had this image, it's an ethical obligation to, um, to integrate it and make it real in the outer world. If you don't do that, you know, you are sort of betraying the image, you know, and, and that's why Jung would say too, and I, I, Hillman says as well, is that um, experiencing these images through um, hallucinogenic or psychedelic drugs or whatever, you know, is not really le legitimate, even though I think for some people, it, you know, I, you know, for the peyote cult and some of those places it is, is an open door into the unconscious. But as long as you make it into the ethical obligation, you add that to it. You know, in other words, there is um, something, a task is being asked of you that needs to be fulfilled, you know, uh, and uh, so, and, and of course, the, you know, he's calling this thing, know thyself, uh, you know, Hillman, uh, the chapter, and it means an archetypal knowing and a demonic knowing. So, so you know, there's, there's the gods and there's the material world. And in between are the daemons, the archetypes. And, and he's, he's saying that all of, there's, there's daemons everywhere. You know, and you can talk to any of them, and uh, and actually, he, he, um, the the daemons were very important in um, in pre-Christian uh, Europe until Christianity came and said, and the Nicene Creed says, "There's God in the world and nothing in between." You know, so and you would say there was, then you'd be, you know, uh, either a heretic or a witch. You know, but uh, the, the, it re it reinvigorated itself in the Renaissance and in the rebirth of art. Go, go ahead. So Greg, in, introducing another word, eminence. So, so eminence, yes. So if we have God and we have the world, uh, the daemons are really the expression of God in the world. Eminence. The, yeah. the eminence of God, mm -hmm. like the shine of the sun. They, that he, they met, uh, you know, um, Hillman, is gives a, a very good description of the difference between imminence and transcendence. Now, uh, in the word, now when Jung is talking about transcendent, he's not talking about the same transcendence. He's talking about a bridge, a mediatrix, you know, but for transcendence, it's something outside of this world. Imminence is the divine experienced in the world, you know, so it's, um, that, and that is the the daemons. He says, um, and and uh, uh, actually, uh, it was fabulous that you brought that up, Stuart, because he says um, transcendence is spirit language, and imminence is soul language. You know, imminence is the language of the soul, and uh, 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 so anyway, uh, he just goes on here that active imagination aims not at silence, but at speech, not at stillness, but at a story or a theater or conversation. Now we're talking about the imminence too, that, that imminence needs to be very important. Uh, the, that the fact that we are personifying living figures in the other world and having conversations with them. You know, I mean, this is, this is, uh, this, this was the tradition that was obliterated by Christianity uh, that lived on somewhat in alchemy, you know, underneath the, uh, and that's, go ahead, sir. So Craig, just, just want to add something else into that. And that is, if we look at it, there's, 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 there's the, the, the contact, for want of a better word, the contact that we have with imminence or with the daemon as it arises in our life. It's a direct affect, if you like, an uprising out of the unconscious mm -hmm. that meets us and influences our life. And then we might enter into active imagination with that, into a dialogue with that. 
which, which is very purposeful. It's our direct response to that. And then there's also active imagination where we, we go knocking on the door, where we try to invoke a response from, uh, from the daemon, from the world of daemons, if you like, or these psychoidal beings, in order that they will respond to us knocking at their door. And then there's also the active imagination that we, we do with contents that have arisen in our dreams or into our life, which may be as a direct result of, of our work, working on our process, which is more seeking elaboration of our own process. So I, I would see those as three different categories. I'm not saying the outcome is any different. So, so, so there's the direct response to the touch of God. There's, there's the, the curiosity that we invoke by going there and knocking on the door to see, well, can I connect? Can I make a contact with this? Is, it, is, is there anybody there in the darkness? Or there's us reworking a dream. And, and what Jung, Jung would say is this world, and it's the alchemical world, is, is in, in animating or enlivening the, the world of soul, the world of the daemons. There's the world of the transcendent spirit and there is the world. But what, what Jungian psychology and active imagination is intending to do is to uh, awaken the middle world, which is our informing wisdom while alive, you know. So in other words, it's our directing, uh, uh, can, uh, what, what, um, what Hillman says, the ego ce ceases to be the arbiter of morality. And now these daemons become our spiritus rector or our teacher, you know, and no longer the ego is our teacher. Our teacher is, is becomes the daemons, you know, so they're the ones that, um, that and, and, you know, uh, Jeffrey Raff knew uh, Marie-Louise von Franz and, and uh, she did kind of what you did with Patrick Stewart is she, uh, she lived her active imaginations all the time. And if somebody asked her out for lunch, she would ask a f an inner figure if it was okay, <laughs> if I should, you know, and, and she would do that in her analysis too. And, uh, you know, Jeffrey Raff supposedly wrote his whole books. And by the way, ally work is okay. But, you know, if you really want to get um, Raff's uh, just incredible uh, way of explaining things clearly, um, the wedding of Sophia or the, the, the wounded God or alchemical active imagination are far better representations of who Raff, Raff is rather than ally work. You know, and, and like uh, Ivan said, there's a, a certain aspect of ally work which other than probably Stuart, we don't have access to, I mean, cause we're the rope climbers, you know? And uh, so we're working with images as Stuart described of the dreams and uh, with, with figures that we have dialogues with, but it, it's really, it's populating the world of the soul. And the world of the soul is the feminine anima uh, and women have feminine animas as well as men. I mean, they're, um, they have the feminine aspect with, of course they are the feminine, but I mean, they're, um, they, they're, uh, they're the uh, earth in need of spirit. And we're this, we are these beings up in the air that are need, need of the earth, you know? So we're, men are in particular in need of, of the uh, feminine because it's unconscious in us, you know? And that's where, you know, like the un inferior function is unconscious in this, so is the, is the feminine, you know, and we need to uh, reconnect with both of them. And it's particularly with Eros, because men always want to, go ahead, Jordy. Um, oh, I, I think Jordy or Kevin. Jordy, why don't you go first and then Kevin. Go well, ahead. yes. To some degree, what you said on the feminine inside, inside the man, but to some degree, in my personal experience, experience, I had some revelation of my feminine side 
when I was in a medical student in my early 20s. And it was a joke. I have an inside woman, we can be girlfriends. <laughs> mm -hmm. joke, yes. I, I play with, not with nurses, which were off limits, with female, say, course mates. Otherwise, there is a layer of introjection of shadows of family woman, notably mother, mm -hmm. which has yes. a, a very uh, destructive interaction with a superego. Mm -hmm. And that's forever. I mean, you have to deal with this, this type of a scar. I am speaking for myself. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, dealing is it, do you think that that is more dealing with uh, uh, dealing with grief or is it dealing with the archetypal world of the feminine? I mean, as far as the uh, mother, the negative mother, I mean, no, is, no. Is, is it a personal uh, grief or is there is an archetypal aspect that you're in my case, talking about? In my case, and as far as I can tell, uh, because I looked that to my children or my sisters and brothers and family and others, is uh, it's a personal, it's not an archetype, it's the shadow of your physical yes. mother. Mm -hmm. In my case, named Isabel, I mean, and her, say, shortcomings projected with an intensity of a laser yes. and mingling with the superego and mingling with the connection with the inner feminine, blocking it somehow. That's that's what I think is, is happens I to a lot I, of us. I, I was there when my mother died. I, I was present uh, a few years ago. And it was not a relief. It was an adult act of, of grieving as it should be in my case and my younger sister who were there. But uh, I would, in, in business sense, it's a sunk cost. Yes. In Spanish, coste hundido. Yes. I'm... You have to budget for it. I mean, yeah. Well, you, and uh, that's a personal, I, I don't need to be distracted, but at some point, one has to assume that it's not perfect and has to have a budget for the management of, say, the contractor's uh, shortcomings, so to speak. Yes. Well, yeah, and, and other, you know. Other fear can be particularly distracting and intense. Well, yeah, and that's that's the more the personal history, though, yeah. that we then you said it, too. I liked what you said is that until you deal with that, you can't deal with the internal feminine. And and that was something that Gary experienced in one of his dreams the other day. There is another aspect in that. Uh, and um, don't quote me because you will destroy my professional career, but I am lunatic. And I sense uh, the, the, the moon, the moon phase. Yes. And I sense uh, the full moon as today. Mm -hmm. And my ex-wife said, because normally I don't pay attention, they say, you are becoming awkward, irritable, and strange. Are we near full moon? Yes. I mean, <laughs> well, now, yeah, yeah, that that is. Um, and that yeah. somehow it's an earthquake on the feminine side. Yes. Inner, in my case. Huh? Yeah, that is that I would say. Now, I'm just yes. saying yep. that um, as far as um, that's uh, every, everyone has to deal with an aspect of their of their grief or their shadow or whatever, uh, which Jung called the apprenticeship work. They need to deal with all the personal baggage that is their woundings and where they've been wounded and, and grieving from some personal uh, history, that needs to be uh, somehow dealt with, you know? Now, what he's, uh, so then when he starts talking about the archetypal feminine, that is um, after this, this area has been resolved to some extent, you know? Not to say that it's easy, it's not easy. I mean, Gary uh, had this dream where the where the anima told him, uh, no, you, you're not included. I'm going to have three lovers, but it's one of them's not you. <laughs> but, 
but anyway, go ahead, uh, Jordy. What were you going to say? And then Kevin has something to say too. Just to up, I agree with you. I will say it's something you won't solve. It's something you have to make manageable. Young would say outgrow. Uh, no, you yes, can't solve uh, any problems. You just outgrow them. Yeah. Uh, so, somehow, I mean, uh, uh, it's doable. It's not that difficult. It's painful, but it's not that difficult. Yes. And yeah. uh, pain can be in debt sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, did you have anything to say? or? Yeah. Uh, I just had a small question, but I, I can also perhaps... Uh, Jody <laughs> mentioned some very interesting because I, you know, I had a dream and I was reading. I don't know if you have um, read. Uh, there's a book called Ladies of Darkness, and it deals with a demonic anima. Mm -hmm. And Jody said something very, very, very important, uh, which I also read yesterday. I read it several times, but I also I read yesterday. You know, the feminine as acting as a super ego, mm -hmm. the mother image, the great mother acting as a super ego. And your anima, if it's not liberated from the great mother, more or less, so what happens is that the, 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 your anima can turn dem demonic, essentially, because of the guilt, you know, of the mother church. You know, we, we project the great mother into a church, so we spiritualize the anima. And so once, once we do spiritualize the anima, you know, we have guilt, you know, we don't want to taint her in any way. And so the great mother act as a super ego, which I, Jordi, I think you said it brilliant, brilliantly. And yes, we can, you know, we can quote you on this because it says on this book, and this book is pretty, pretty much the best uh, book I have read on a demonic aspect of the feminine. And um, yes, but I only had a very simple question to Adam because Adam uh, talked about um, He's sort of have already done active imagination. And for me, um, do you, I would just want to know, like, um, do you know your MBTI uh, type or Myers-Briggs type indicator? Like, if, if you you have taken that and, and and if you know your type. I haven't done that yet, but everybody keeps on suggesting that, so I probably will. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm going to guess it. <laughs> guess it's INFP. But... I, INFP. I, I I'm just guessing. I don't. I, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Okay. But I, I would say there's. The, I, I would. I would expect something quite high up. So, uh, yeah. Just a uh, okay. uh, Thank you. I, I'm just guessing. And Adam, this is totally out of bounds. But that that I'm just guessing that you're probably a, a, a feeling type uh, mm -hmm. with intuitive as your uh, auxiliary function. And uh, uh, that you are tend to gain energy uh, through contemplation rather than through outward acts. But I don't. I don't know. That might be wrong. I don't know about the extroversion introversion. But um, Kevin, and, yeah, you you said Adam is a sensing type. I I I I don't want to say what his type is, but I already I what I get like you know my 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 intuition says he has extroverted sensing quite high uh, well maybe high that's true i'm i it's yeah. not my for me to say yeah. i apologize and, and introverted, yeah. fee, uh, introverted feeling and uh yeah and i i don't i don't say this from so much what he said i yeah some of it from what he says but even um yes but yeah, I, I for me it's more eye contact, like the way yeah people look in, 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 from their eyes, like very on. <laughs> well, you're so oh, lyric, you're so lyrical, uh, Adam. You're so lyrical, you know. Huh? I, I just can't imagine that you don't have a very strong feeling function. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an I'm an MBTI practitioner, so I work a bit with the with psychological side. But obviously, you never know, like especially when older, when a person is. Um, and more developments so on it becomes harder uh, hmm. in terms of typing but it becomes easier in terms of uh, we can say testing part or mm. well, but I, I think I it's just, interesting you want to say hi to Carlos hi Carlos yeah. uh, well anyway uh, so just to go on with a little bit of this and I'll, I'll do a better summary next time because you know uh, but Jung's psychology is less concerned with personality as individualism 
than with individuation as an impersonal psychic process, which is the ultimate giver of value. So he's saying this is that it, it Young's psychology is concerned with individuation as an impersonal psychic process, which is the ultimate giver of value. So the idea of, of these images uh, and making them real in the outer world is to uh, it, what, what uh, Aniela Yaffe called Jung's myth of meaning. You know, the whole idea of, of Jung in psychology is uh, that we have no more myth in this world that our myth is gone. We don't have um, any myth that, that we can, uh, that at least there are some people that don't live in the collective myth and they need uh, what, what he said, at least a third of his patients had no real problems other than um, uh, restlessness and meaninglessness and, and his psychology, and he, he experienced this himself you know, uh, is, uh, um, you know, when he uh, had his, uh, you know, build up this great big ego and became a great big, if you, if you look at Young's photos when he was a psychologist before 1913 and look at him about 1925. I mean, he's become so much, uh, his eyes have become so much softer and less severe. And if you read his letters before 1913, He's, he's a tiger, you know, where if you read him in, in the, the 30s and 40s, he can still be tough, but it's, it's tough for a purpose, you know. Uh, but um, anyway. I just wanted to ask a quick question. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, about active imagination and alchemy. Um, is there a particular uh, alchemical process that, active imagination falls under like solutio or sublim sublimation. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just curious if there is one in particular that it falls under or is related to. Well, um, you know, the alchemical laboratory, you know, was uh, consisted of two places. Uh, it was, it was um, the place where work is done, which was the lab part and an oratory is a place where you do meditation, you know? And in, in alchemy, uh, Martin Rulandus describes, and Young quotes this many, many times, meditation is dialogue, an internal talk with a, uh, with a partner who is um, the equivalent of a diamond or an angel. So, and, and the cooking, uh, now all the aspects of from, from Negredo to, uh, you know, uh, volatility and, and sublimation and coagulant is, is really describing a, um, a spiral path where that you always start at the same destination point, but from a different place on this spiral, closer to the, the center. So it's describing the hero's journey, I think really, all the, uh, the different um, aspects. But the, um, the, al al the active imagination aspect of it, which brought forth all these images, by the way, you know, uh, if you read Alchemical Active Imagination by, uh, um, uh, I mean, I've read it about four or five times, I still haven't got it all from uh, Jeffrey Rapp, He'll show you all these wonderful, what they call emblems, you know, which are these fabulously rich images of the process of individuation, you know, and you're going to see, I mean, when somebody explains to you what they are, you know, uh, here is the river with the two fish swimming in opposite directions. And if you see over here's the city and over here's the unconscious and there's no bridge between, you know, and then, then suddenly, you know, they meet the dragon. Well, that's, that's Hermes in his, his, his elementary state. And then pretty soon they show the same scene again. But now there's some people and villages on the other side of the unconscious. And there's a bridge between it, you know. And then it keeps going and going and going. But that, that, that's, that's sort of the, the, um, 
But the, the active imagination is an alchemical meditation. And an alchemical meditation is a talk with an internal um, partner, an internal talk with a partner um, who, who instructs us and informs us. And through, uh, through that talk, um, the symbol is created. I mean, what you're trying to bring into being is the third thing, which is the, um, is the um, philosopher's stone, which cannot appear in nature. It can only be um, uh, created by the mutual um, cooperation of the unconscious and the ego. And through that dialogue, through this active, med active imagination or this alchemical meditation, which are the same thing, gradually this third thing takes shape. And the third thing is really is where the opposites can reconcile. The reason it's a redeeming thing is because um, the opposites can never coexist. If the opposites went together, it would be a black hole and it, they would obliterate themselves. There would be nothing. I mean, you basically have unity, you know, and one is not a number, two is a number. So you cannot be conscious of, uh, of a black hole in the, there's an event horizon on a black hole where light neither can't escape, you know, and uh, young uh, actually, or Ron Franz saw it. This is actually what happens when we're dead too. We go into this kind of a black hole where light can't escape. You know, sometimes it does, but um, you know, it's, it's to someone who's very permeable to, uh, to the uh, unconscious can, and, and Stuart can tell us a million stories about it. But um, anyway, that's that the idea of the active imagination is an alchemical meditation. And the object of both is to create the middle place where the opposites can reside and talk with each other. And this is, this is like the, the temple in between. It's actually also what is redeemed. It's the, it's the saving thing. It is the savior. It's the redeemer is this um, place where opposites can get uh, joined together. And uh, so there is um, in, in time and space, okay? Because they can't otherwise join together in time and space. But anyway, um, that's, uh, uh, I think all the aspects of the, uh, of the other aspects of alchemy are describing points on a circle, you know, which happens over and over again. You always come back to the negredo and you are the prima materia over and over again. And then you have to go through the process of refining that uh, prima materia and, and, and making and refining it into gold. And that's the numinous thing. And now let me tell you about the, num the word numinous too. The word numinous is means the images that we're dialoguing with in active imagination have been animated. That was the original meaning of numinous. The other beckons, okay? The other, not, the God nods. If you, if you look at the picture of any image long, long enough, you animate it. That's the cooking aspect of alchemy. When you lend ego attention to anything you cook it and it's it warms up and it and it and it can come real in the outer world but anyway i mean that's that's sort of uh metaphorical descriptions you know what one thing uh hillman says too is that metaphysics and physics uh have one thing in common and that is that they're very literal where the world of the soul is all about the metaphorical aspect, you know, uh, it is the, it's the mercurial flowing aspect where the where the metaphysical, which is you know the uh, description of the transcendent, and and the physical laws are somewhat unless you're talking maybe about quantum mechanics or something, are very um, have a, a literal. Okay, I, I think. 
that some of the physical laws are becoming more metaphorical. But anyway, um, so uh, just to go on th with his descriptions of uh, uh, alchemical active imagination, uh, I mean, active imagination, uh, the, the uh, third thing he had was, uh, we, we went through the first two. Uh, the third thing was, um, uh, well, well, the third was active imagination aims at silence, not at silence, but speech, not at stillness, but at story or theater or conversation. You know, uh, the Jews say that God created man because he loves his story. So, you know, that's what we're here for, is, is not, not to, uh, uh, to, to create a story. And that's what life, uh, what, what is so enjoyable about um, in, in, uh, in Carmina Barana, you know, it says, hail world so rich in joy, I will always be your servant through love of you. I mean, it's just this, this Dionysian aspect of, uh, of the richness of being alive. You know, now we're not gonna be alive forever, but there's a great joy in, in a nice dinner, you know, and a nice walk through nature and, you know, through going through an art museum that is absolutely irreplaceable. I mean, the, uh, uh, the uh, a moment with a, a loved one or whatever, you know, it's. There's a richness to that that has some purpose. You know, one, beautiful, one, go ahead. There's, a, there's this beautiful film, I think it's from 1968, called Wings of Desire. I think it's a German film uh, in black and white. And it's these two angels. Yes. That, yes. that are I've seen that. Uh, that. That are kind of overseeing the populace. And and they appear in all these everyday moments when the human beings seem to be just oblivious to the fact that that we live in this sensuous world and oh it's just such a beautiful film of of uh the veil between these two worlds that points up exactly what you're talking about yeah i love i love this scene in um i think it, it what's the, is that called amelie with uh, where uh, she takes the blind man and and she goes and tells him all the different things. Oh, look what they're doing in the meat shop today. And, and over here, this woman's got a funny hat and everything. And then when, when she gets done, she just says, you know, merci, and she runs away. And he's looking up at, it's just this, she brings the light of, of all this beauty to, to him, even though he's, he's blind. But anyway, uh, so, so then alch alchemy, I mean, active imagination is not a mystical activity. It's not performed for the sake of illumination, for reaching select states of consciousness, samadhi, satori, unity with all things. Said so this would be imposing a spiritual intention upon the soul, a psychological activity. That would be the repression of the soul by the spirit. So the, the um, enlivening of the soul this experience of the soul, the soul becoming animated in the outer world is not the same as, as spiritual ecstasy. It, it is, has a different quality. And um, it also has a profoundly human quality. It has to do with the body and with really our biology because the soul has body in it. Spirit doesn't. You know, so uh, it, the the aspect is the soul is 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 the mediator between spirit and the body, you know. But the body is 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 um, as as they say in alchemy, you know, its strength is perfected when it returns to earth. While we're alive and while our body is actually working, it, it is a temple, you know, and it is the temple of being alive, you know. And uh, uh, if you leave that temple, you, you're, you think of all the things you're leaving. I mean, you're leaving um, the, the wonderful feeling of your toes, you know, or, or just, the, 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 just the beautiful feelings that you could, if you really are, are body conscious, 
you can feel in in body. And you know, one one of Hillman's uh, students, Arnold Mendel, he just totally went over to everything's about the body. You know, while you're alive, you know that to him that was the transforming medium. And there was uh, another person, um, a young man named Guggenbull Craig, that uh, was the same thing. That he says that until um, uh, Christianity celebrates the body as much as they do its spirit, until they they celebrate eros on the altar uh, uh, in bodily form, that it it it's it's incomplete, you know, and. Uh, um, Anyway, uh, that was the fourth aspect is that um, it's not. Okay. Yes. yes. Well, what you just said about glorifying the body. Yes. That's exactly what the uh, papal doctrine of the Catholic Church mm -hmm. in the 1950s regarding the assumption of Mary was all yes. about. Yes, it was. It was. It was, it was, it was they knew it or not. not. I'm sorry? Whether they knew it or not. Well, they knew it enough yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Pope Pius had several visions regarding this. Mm -hmm. He was uh, fearful about promulgating that doctrine because there was resistance from certain quarters of the church. Uh, but after a number of revelations, he did. And uh, Dr. Jung celebrated the announcement of this doctrine because particularly from the masses of Catholics and Christians, uh, primarily in feminine countries, of South America and France. Uh, he had seen this coming in the uh, dreams uh, of his patients. Uh, so, and Dr. Yun also said regarding the human body that individuation uh, wasn't mysticism or shamanism or any of that. It was a biological process. Mm -hmm. it simply cannot take place without a living human body and an ego uh, to provide cognition to what we were experiencing both in what we call the physical world and in the so-called inner world. I think that's why Jungian psychology is so compelling to me as a poer, you know, a poer eternus is that um, is how profoundly human it is, how profoundly connected with the body and with the earth and with um an alchemy you know that the redeemer in alchemy is not the son of man who's called the salvator microcosmy the the redeemer in alchemy is called the salvator macrocosmy and that is uh hermes he's the lord of the lower worlds and he's he's actually the uh um you know, you know is is a a God that enjoys the uh, company of, of the criminals as well as the saints, you know, and doesn't distinguish between the two. So, I mean, it's a very neutral uh, aspect. So it's nature, it's Taoism, you know, I mean, uh, the, uh, 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 the aspect of, of good and bad is, um, is, is our opposites and they need each other. Good and evil need each other. You can't have good without evil and you can't have evil without good, you know, but they're both opposites that exist only in the ego, exist only in consciousness, really. I mean, they don't, if, if you don't have consciousness, there is no such thing as good and evil. I mean, no tiger is going to mention this, that, you know, that it is what it is, you know, life. So uh, anyway, uh, then uh, he's just got six points here. Uh, the fifth one is, uh, um, uh, he says, uh, active imagination is uh, not psychological activity in only the personal sense for the sake of curing symptoms, calming or abreacting terror and greed, bettering families, improving and developing the personality. He says, that's not what, um, active imagination is for. It's not to uh, develop our personality. He says, such would be to demean the daemons into our personal servants, whose concern must then be with problem solving, those delusions that we call reality. 
because we have not seen through to their fantasies, their guiding messages to project them along. So, I mean, and that, that's the difference between the imaginal world and the fantasy world is the fantasy world serves only the ego. The imaginal world is the world of the daemon. It's the middle world of the soul. And that's the world of active, active imagination. And it's impersonal and it's objective, you know? And th this is one thing Hillman is criticized for as a Jungian is that um, he's, he's saying all our dreams, all our um, active imaginations, uh, he says, personify the objective. I mean, the non-ego, give it a pers personality personify it. That's what we're supposed to do in act imagination. Objectify the personal. You know, anything that has to do with ego or the conscious attitude. The, the way you resolve that is, and this was Tony Wolf was famous for this, saying this. When anybody came in to her with an annoying personal problem, which she's, she, you know, all the youngins were not very patient with people with personal problems because they said, we're, we're here to uh, create the philosopher's stone. We're not here to handle your personal issues. But what she would say, okay, objectify the personal. That was the other, you know, personify the objective, the non-ego world, make it, give it reality in a voice. Okay, but uh, the personal problems, objectify the personal. So you got a problem, you know, there's some problem. And Tony Wolf would say, draw a picture of it. And, and then after you draw a picture of it, set it over here on the table. And then you look at it and you say, yeah, that's my problem over there, but it's not me, it's over there. So, I mean, you can then create a distance between yourself and these personal issues, which seem to have you in samsara, you know, in the whirlwind, because you can't, you, you, you're being, you're not at the, at the hub of the wheel, you're at the rim of the wheel. And you're turning around in the in the uh, wheel of fortuna, you know. And uh, the way you break that cycle is to objectify the person, you know. You put it over here and create a distance from yourself. Correct. And then go ahead. And correct. Yes. Yeah, I was just thinking like um, because I read the uh, Robert uh, Johnson. I think it's called Balancing Heaven or Earth. Yes. Or he had another book I think which is on active imagination. And for me, it was like the first thing <laughs> which Hillman says that is exactly it's not because for, for what I read from that book is 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 um is essentially leaving up uh, leaving out your your different sides which is unlived. That's, that's one aspect, and another aspect is to bring the little eyes, which is essentially the shadows, into consciousness through active imagination. And so yeah, so that was for me. You know, like I said, perhaps what uh, um, Hillman is criticized for, I don't know if it's by them or, but for me, that's um, one aspect of, of active imagination is to bring the little eyes into um, consciousness, you know, because with that, you also bring your inferior function, which is essentially also brings up the philosopher's stone. I don't know, or something like that. Yeah, well, the spoon turns the lock. That was what my mind said. You know, uh, I'm gonna, uh, next time I'll be a little better uh, handle on this and I'll, I'll just summarize it real quick. And, uh, uh, you know, and then we can um, maybe, uh, if, if it takes a whole session, we'll, we can do that, but um, we'll uh, then maybe move on to some of von Franz's stuff. But I will summarize this because I, and I actually am gonna do it in an outline because I, I'm saying if, 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 if we can wrap our heads around this little essay, by, um, by um, uh, Hillman, you're gonna have a, a night and day. I mean, I, I just felt the scales falling from my eyes as I read this, because it really does, um, uh, you know, in, in the difference between imminence and transcendence, the difference between um, what, what he calls, uh, uh, there's two kinds of devotion. One is, I mean, to duali, which is, to be in, in in service to the inner world, and and then the other one is to be um, a, a, a devote, some kind of a um, worship 
which is not what alchemy is about. But why don't we just open it up to everybody uh, having a few closing comments. Okay, you can start, Jordy, and then we'll just go around everybody. Just, uh, we got about 15 minutes. Just any comments do you have? It doesn't have to be about this, just about anything. Go ahead, Jordy. Uh, four items in different, in different levels. I would like to invite someone, but I'll present that, I'll write you a short presentation of the person. Uh, it's a psychologist with a master on Oriental Studies at some Loyola University, Fulbrighter. She's young and she's a yoga instructor and she's clever. Uh, okay. All right, uh, definitely. Yeah, that would be very interesting. Second, well, uh, second, second item. Uh, thank you very much for the effort. It's enlightening, it's inspiring, uh, expansive. I mean, to wrap up what's moving on here takes time, and but it's a delight to do. Uh, one, one petition. Uh, do you have the rough books you mentioned before on alchemy? Yes. And the other one? Uh, are they expensive to get? Or it's no, I will, I will give you a PDF copy of it. Thank you very much. As the Kevin one mentioned on the dark feminine. Yes, dark feminine. Yes, it's, yeah, it's... Will we, at the mm. end, we'll, we'll be having a, a share beautiful collection. Huh? Yes. Now, on the uh, three substantial things. I mentioned before the moon and the effects of the moon subjectives. I leave it here. If anyone wants to comment, I will be most interested in listening. The two other things are objections or difficulties or problematic things. Uh, one is concerning liminality. We haven't talked about liminality and the liminoid uh, derivation, the unhealthy liminoid derivation, which I think it's a major issue. And at some point, I would like to have that on the agenda. Okay, definitely. Maybe you can point us to some some uh, um, background on it too. Um, I'm, I'm gonna also send a book called Women's Mysteries and it's by Esther Harding. Yeah. And there is a chapter in there on, on the moon, which yeah. is the most beautiful thing I've ever read. I mean, it is, it, it's showing uh, the, this woman in, who had a dream uh, that she was wearing fish skins and, yeah. uh, and the fish skin keeps going up uh, as the moon, um, no. as the moon becomes darker and darker, and when it finally becomes the dark moon, she's totally a fish, you know. Uh, and then it starts over again. But it was a dream that she had. But Esther Harding was uh, this. This actually came out of the uh, vision seminars. Uh, she there, several books were written out of that seminar. Another one was by. Uh, uh, by Linda Fears David, too. But anyway, uh, it's just a, a beautiful chapter on the moon, and I'll, I'll send that to you. I think, I mean, to me, it was the moon. Uh, I understood the moon for, first. And the reason I didn't really understand it is because the moon is supposed to be a poisoner. You know, on, on, the, on, the, on the old moon, it's, it's a poisonous moon or something, and I just needed to understand it. Okay, well, um, how about, uh, let's, let's go ahead. I'll finish. The first one, which to me is a major one, it's concerning the ego. Yeah. And I notice that to use the notion of ego almost as a Freudian notion, Anglo-Saxon version. I mean, for us continentals who got the Jung and, and Freud translation directly from German, Ich is not, is not ego. Ich is me. Ego has a religious connotation. Uh, and it's polarizing by definition. It's not as neutral. Uh, in my experience, it's healthier or more useful, if you wish, to keep it neutral, the, the, the I more than the ego. Furthermore, and that's my contribution, if we look, or I, I have to look that, to the mind-body type of relation, Low and Reich and company, many times when the word ego is used in this context, means mental, mental activity, self-conscious mental activity, 
which has an element of persona, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera which can be confounding. I am just making that, that comment. Uh, well, yeah, in Spanish, we'll say para matizar, to, uh, to put some perspective. Yeah, well, um, I just would say about ego, I use it only in the terms uh, that Jung uses, I hope, which is the ordering archetype of the conscious attitude or the, of yeah, the yeah. world, where the self is the ordering archetype of the psyche itself, which includes the ego. You know, so so the ego world is is the world of the conscious is the ordering center of the conscious attitude, the things that actually enter awareness. That's what I, I'm pretty sure is is I'm it's, thinking is what it's, it's not an objection. It's it's yeah. not a it's not a disqualification no, by all means. It's well, yeah. to, to, to enrich something to make it more fruitful. Yes. Generally speaking, I learn in life not to be fascinated for internal, uh, say, thinking activity, except on professional matters. Mm -hmm in a classroom or uh, dealing with patients or epidemiology or something like that. Uh, and to put some distance with mental activity, particularly the articulate one, and begin to trust, say, the almost automatic intuition. Which, yeah, well, um, yeah, it, well I'm kind of, it, definitely. Uh, the one thing I think is the in, this, in this sense, in this sense, concerning Raf and I don't know if we are going to talk about that, the, the helper. I don't have to look in my, in my brain somehow. I don't, don't have to be revealed. It's somewhere and I have to notice it, as simple as that. And I am beginning to, that's beginning to happen in my life. Of having healthier, say, reactions or, or whatever, or being better put together. Mm -hmm. Uh, can, trust, can I just add, that, yeah, and can I just add a quick here? I mean, can I just add a quick comment? Just a quick comment. That's that's not very really long. Just for Jordi. Hello. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, um, Jordi. Like, or, I yeah. It's it's already been said. Like the ego as a a a the ego as a breakdown of, of reality in different uh, and you said also it has something to do with processing which is essentially the, the western view of it also the union view of it even the question you pose in terms of you know you want to you want to put the ego in a certain sets of category in a certain set of mental framework in order to understand this uh, I, I, Jung would call that introverted thinking and introverted thinking is a is a it's it's a, an aspect of the ego consciousness. Uh, so that's you can say a process attached to it in order to dissect reality in a certain way, form or fashion. So yeah, I, I totally agree there. The I um, yeah many I think union analysts will start eventually changing the I somewhat to. A, a less uh, individualistic term, but I think it's just a way of the way humans are developing right now. Um, I even had my analyst, he said that, that he didn't tell me what, but he said that, that we shouldn't use I, you know, I is a wrong name, but I can't remember what he said about that. But anyways, it's worth mentioning. The mental process can be sort of seen, uh, which is an ego. Well, thank you, Kevin. Uh, uh, do, do, why don't we listen to the people who haven't said anything? Uh, Ivan, do you have any uh, comments? Uh, I don't have any comments on this discussion. I found it really interesting, but I don't have anything to add. Okay. I did appreciate the email you sent the other day, though. I want to say thank you to that. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, um, I did have a comp, or I, it, it's kind of a lot to try to squeeze in here at the end. So I'm not asking you to really go into it in full depth or anything, but. Uh, it's something that I find particularly important. I am just, and I don't really know the best way to word it, but I'm just kind of like, how does this all apply? And what is, uh, what is the application and meaning for all of this for someone that is still 
in their first half of life. And it, the young quote comes to mind, you know, first half of life is primarily for building a healthy ego. Second half of life is letting go of the ego and turning inward. Um, and I almost find, I almost, uh, uh, some of my hiatuses from the group are actually caused by my kind of, uh, on the fence attitude of like, well, I don't really know exactly how to integrate this, you know, apply this, especially since I have generally speaking a really weak ego and I have like, I'll have a dream where my hamster, instead of in his cage, he's in an aquarium and, I, and I'm like, there's not enough land for him. I have to make more land and more islands for him. Hamsters aren't supposed to be swimming in water like this. And it, um, uh, so I have, I just have difficulty in like, what's the meaning and application for someone in my particular stage like this when I'm still trying to develop a healthy ego uh and that's a key word a healthy ego trying to develop it to be strong in a healthy way and not just give it full reign to kind of uh do destructive things and to actually grow and develop so i'm sorry that's a lot being to being aware in. of the shadow would be good for anybody you know depending on, on what are that aspect of their compulsive behavior whether you want are ready to prepare for death is something else, which is what some of us are doing. Go ahead, Adam. But uh, um, Charles, we'll talk more about that. I think Adam has something to say about okay. that. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to comment on that, but I also saw that Tim had something to say. I don't know if he would maybe want to speak first. Yeah. <laughs> Go well, ahead, Tim. Um, I just wanted to respond to that, 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 um, that, something about that just really fills me with joy that you that you are swimming in the in the unconscious in the midst of a culture that is just saturated with logos and and just really needs that inspiration from the aquarium um and it seems to me that that even though it may intellectually feel like your ego needs more attention you will naturally nurture that part of yourself because you have to stay alive in the world um and it i, I don't know very much about your particular situation but it just seems to me that man we need more people like you in this world that that bring that kind of inspiration out into the culture so thanks very much, Charles. Well, thank you. Well, That's very flattering. Well, I, I think one thing, Charles, is is I, I think you and I probably had the same life path. And I think what I, if I was, you know, 30 years younger, uh, what I would advise myself to do, grounding, you know, get my feet on this friggin' ground, you know. And uh, so, I mean, that's, that I think is, 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 would be, uh, how do we become more earthbound? You know, I mean, that's something that would we would want to explore in uh, in the first half of life. You know, go go ahead, uh, Adam, and then why don't Gary speak, and then we'll have everybody, Carlos and Jan, and and anybody else who wants to talk. Go ahead, man. Yeah, no, the, I, was, I think what Tim and Craig both said is wonderful, and this is just complimentary. From my own point of view, but as Charles was speaking, uh, the thought came to me that like our life is like an archer pointing to the sun, and the first half of life is like drawing back the bow, mm -hmm. and then and then once you have that strength, that ego structure has been built, it's like you can let go, and then your life is just like the arrow that's that's flying, you know. Just, just an, uh, just an idea. No. Well, it is. Uh, yeah, you need the. Well, yeah, plus you've got to have your. I tell you, when I was uh, Charles' age, I was so up in the clouds. I'm telling you, that's what my uh, Norwegian, uh, my grandfather's first cousin told me in Norway. She says, "Craig, you are up in the clouds, 
you need to get your feet on the ground and uh next girl you meet i want you to marry her well go ahead Stuart, and then gary why don't you talk just just to respond to charles again you great responses uh, i think the reason why this is important for you is because it's going to help constellate the ego it's going to stimulate you it, it in the absence of father this is the father the presence of this mind this state of mind this inquiry is the father so so it's going to pull you into being it's going to stimulate you somewhere deep inside and you know get that hamster to get his feet on the ground it's going to create the ground and get the hamster to find it magically mysteriously i think that's what will happen so create more it's, islands it's like you know pushing the hamster's head under the water is it killing the hamster or is it helping the hamster in a way i think this is helping the hamster and the hamster has his own mind and will decide for himself when the time is right to stay in or to leave. So I think meanwhile, this is a stimulation that's happening. You're here, we're here, the conversation's happening. So it's not destructive. It's not, I think, look at it more deeply than that. It's a constellation of some sort. So uh, anyway, I, I think well, it's a good thing. Well, thank Gary, you, do, I love the imagery. Gary, do you have any? Yeah, yet another response to Charles. You know, I think uh, one of the big things about, you know, looking in the young and just, you know, trying some of these practices, and I think you're already doing it, it's just being so in contact with the dreams and what they're trying to tell you. Because, I mean, what better way to go through life than also getting, you know, the dream maker's take on it? Because, you know, I think it prevents the potential of a lot of misdirections that, you know, some of the rest of us have probably taken. Um, and then I guess the, the other thing is, you know, I just wanted to say how much I'm enjoying this Hillman book. This is great. I, I've read a lot of other Hillman. I haven't read this one, but Hillman is, you know, he's right up there with my favorites. So, um, so insightful. It's oh, just yeah. Incredibly uh, genius. Oh, really. it, you know, it, the clarity with which he sees uh, things is just astounding. Um, and, you know, and I don't know if everyone got the link or not, but so if not everyone has the link, you know, we should uh, put it out there maybe in the chat or something. Yeah, okay, yeah. I will do that. Uh, That's, Ca yes, Carlos, uh, hi, welcome Carlos. Do you, what would you, do you have any comments or? Hi everybody. Hi uh, Carlos. <laughs> just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Carlos. I live in Florida, I'm 25, uh, I've met Craig and Tim through another young reading group. And I'm very grateful uh, for Craig for having me. These sort of things are a lot of fun for me. I've been studying young and psychology and sociology and philosophy as a hobby for about three years outside of school. And I know how powerful a lot of these messages can be. They're usually harder to put into practice than just reading them. And groups like this can really motivate you into going out there and actually practicing these skills rather than just absorbing them like a sponge. Well, that's, how about how about you, Jan? Do you have any comments? I know you you're a, a absorber. I, I <laughs> go ahead. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, Joseph Campbell said, um, "We're not seeking the meaning of life; we're seeking the experience of being alive." And um, I think with Charles, um, and just going back, you know, I identify with you, Charles. I, I too seek the heights and depths of vitality. And I think that that's like studying on some level, but th there needs to be a re reflective piece, a bridge and between the sky and the earth. And um, you're, you're, you're doing the right things. <laughs> so keep, keep on keeping on. That, that would be my, my advice. Um, it, take it as you wish. Uh, but at, and, and thanks to everybody. I didn't get the recent e email, so I'm gonna. Okay. Email. Yeah, I think I'm not on the list. But I've okay. been going back to the beginnings and watching Craig's uh, videos. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jan, if you if you can just message me. I thought well, I had. Well, maybe may, I will make sure that maybe I grabbed a 
email that didn't have your name on it, but That's I do have I think your it email. Is. Yeah, I don't think yes. I'm on the original list, so it, it's it's not a problem. And yeah, I'll... I will resend it. I'm sorry. No it's, worries. It's in the chat now, so yeah, excellent. You, know, you can pick you. it up from there. No need to resend then, Craig. Okay. How uh, how about you, Lewis? Do you have any uh, closing comments, and then I'll open it up to anybody. No, but I I will say that um, of course on uh, Skip's uh, group. Uh, this past week, uh, he uh, allowed me to advertise his uh, meeting they had earlier today uh, on my Facebook group and elsewhere. And he's indicated to me uh, since that's ended that he had a very good turnout. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm telling you this because I would be happy to publicize your group as well. Oh, well, that would be that'd be wonderful. I, yes. I would just need from you, you know, the exact time and link sure. and all of that. But um, I would be happy to do that. I, I will. Uh, I'll send it to you. Definitely. Oh, OK, now, anybody else? Tim, how about you? I'd, I would just reiterate that that was really helpful, Lewis, to, to get a few more people involved. I, I really appreciate that. Well, how about uh, I, I would you, you, love to get uh, in any of these groups that are, are generally um, consisting of uh, what people call themselves introverts and all uh, of have, you know, I'd love to see six extroverts sitting here and, uh, you know, get get uh, differing perspectives, because uh, if you have the uh, people just singing along with the same choir, well, uh, you can tend to think that's the universal reality, but if you can have someone singing uh, off tune a little bit, you might realize, well, there's other people singing off tune and who's to say who sing on tune and who isn't. Yeah, that's very well said. Does anybody else have any closing comments? Uh, uh, Jordy or, or Adam? All, or all I wanna say is I still think we should get a conference together at some point. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Yes. I will do that. Uh, 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 okay. Is there anybody else have any uh, words of wisdom or we'll just start next week and I will be a little more organized, but you know, it, there was just so much to wrap my head around. And I also send the link uh, to Hillman and Young talking. I just think it's so beautiful, you know, uh, to hear it says, uh, Mr. Hillman has a question. I think and to be fair to him, I should ask him to state it out loud, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, Jordy. Thank you for everything. I was trying to Dropbox the, the link. Yes. It has been cumbersome because I forgot my Dropbox keyword, etc. Just, just if you can just email it to me. You're on our, our email list, aren't you, or not? I, I am, I am, yes. Ah, okay, well, you can just email it to the group then. Um, and I will uh, uh, send the chat uh, box as well uh, with, um, uh, you, you know, at the end with a link to the video if you want, if you did want to watch it again. But anyway, so we'll see you all next week and hopefully I'm a, a little less scatterbrained. Just a, a real quick comment yes, Gary. to Jordy. And that is like when you follow those links in the Dropbox, one option is to put it in yours, but the option that you really want to do is just download it to your computer because then you don't get all the lag time when you're trying to page through and stuff. It's all resident. So yeah, you actually want to stay completely out of your Dropbox anyway. Yeah, you these are very small files too. Like I think they're only eight meg or they're very not very big. It's, it's, it's an issue of attention management. Like Regan, I cannot chew uh, gum and walk, you know, at the same time. Yes, <laughs> join the club. <laughs> Okay, and I just remember, Charles, you and I are brothers, so we're we, we're we're taking the same uh, journey here. So anyway, well, I'll see see all you guys uh, Craig, next Craig, time. Yeah, go ahead. You are doing exceedingly well. Your presence, to begin with, as a doctor, you could you should have been a good general practitioner in your in your town. You have a pleasant presence. You are calm. Well, yes, I, that's why uh, I I always tell my wife. She says I have very good, a high self-esteem because no matter how much she insults me, I don't react. So anyway. <laughs> that's, a, that's a skill to learn when yes. I, 
to be uninsultable. I mean, yeah, don't take it personally. You know, actually, I, I love it. I like to hear a little bit of, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, you know, like I was telling Gary had a very unpleasant dream. And I told him, I would love to have had that dream, you know, to tell me that I'm not worthy of being in bed with the anima, you know. <laughs> that would have been a, a very, a wake up call, which is what I always need. Okay, well. I, I don't know if I speak for the group, but I am quite pleased to be here. It's inspiring. It's a bit overwhelming, the, the magma of issues and energies and fluids, which agitate, uh, it, it's a big salad, I mean. Well, yeah, um, you know that's that's probably because of my energies a little scatterbrained too. But but uh, I, I make up for my passion. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But uh, I mean, I think the group is doing well, and I extend the, the appreciation to all members who are present or somehow are here because there is more people possibly. Yeah, <laughs> me as well. I I, I learned so much from all. I mean. I learned so much more doing this than I would ever do it on my own, you know, so, uh, but yeah. I, I, I and, and anyone feel to free to break in if you think I'm just blathering while I'm doing talking. Okay. Well, we'll see y'all next week then. Okay. Goodbye. Everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.